Time for more money with Matt Moore and Jay Money. So good to see you guys. All right, the season picks back up on Thursday. Gives us a little bit of a chance to reflect on things. So let's start here. Who's going to get the one seed in the West? Matt, what do you think? I'm taking the Oklahoma City Thunder. You can get this in the market and get a pretty good price on it, uh, plus 200 to 300, depending on where you shop. The I predict Jack the Thunder at 59 wins. That's about a half win over the Wolves, so it's going to be close, and the Wolves do have tiebreaker. But to me, Oklahoma City has been more consistent. They've got who I feel is going to be the MVP and Shea Gillers Alexander. Um, they've been really steady. They're also a better balanced team. They're great offensively and defensively. They're great on both sides of the ball versus the Wolves, who are great defensively and okay offensively. Um, they've got the Thunder have the seventh easiest remaining schedule. That's better than the Wolves. That's better than the Nuggets. Uh, it's better than the Clippers, as a matter of fact. Throw in also that the Wolves have a huge number of back to backs. They have seven back to backs remaining. That is tied for the most in the league with two other teams, one of them being the Los Angeles Clippers, who they're also competing with for this one seed. So those schedule spots aren't as good as OKC. They've been more consistent. Give me the Thunder. Jay, who are you taking? Yeah, if I had to take someone, I would take the Minnesota Timberwolves. They currently sit at the number one seed right now, and they have a uh, seven-game home stand right out of the break as well. That's a big chance for them to widen the gap there. Um, they do have a road trip after that, but seven games coming right out the All-Star break, I think there's that's a chance for them to possibly go on a little mini run here and separate them from the Thunder and the Clippers. You know, I am actually happy to see both of you guys you know, high on the Thunder and the Timberwolves, because I feel like for most of the beginning of the season, when these teams were, you know, they have been near the top yet people are kind of doubting, like, are they really going to, are they really going to get it done this year? And they have stayed pretty consistent. So eager to see how they continue to do. Now let's move over to the East for a second and specifically the Bucks. We have heard um, it, it's nothing new, but <laughs> we've heard some criticism of Doc Rivers they're uh, three and seven, you know, since he took over, obviously tough mid season situation, but is this a good buy low spot for the bucks, Matt? No, look, the trick with buy low spots is you're never going to feel good about it. Like it's never going to be like, oh yeah, this is a great spot to buy in on them. I, I just have a lot of concerns. Uh, Damian Lillard's had some weird comments. They asked for a starting five, didn't list Giannis in that. Did have Bam Adebayo, who plays for, you know, the Miami Heat. You got Doc already reframing it to not be his fault about how he didn't. He asked them, like, what are you doing when firing Adrian Griffin? And he's like, no one's ever tried to do this before. Like, he is setting the bar so high to me that he understands that when, when coaches and players start to set those bars very high and be like, you don't understand how difficult this is, they're trying to soften the blow of disappointment. Um, the other problem is like, look, this team does not have great depth. And Chris Middleton consistently is going to miss time. Brooke Lopez has on and off back issues. You've got Giannis, who has knee soreness. And you've got Dame, who's uh, well into his 30s. The depth on this team is not built to sustain. If they lose one of their starters during a playoff series versus most of the teams that they're going to face in the Eastern Conference playoffs, that could decide it. We saw what happened in 2000. And 22 with honestly a better Bucks team than this one when Chris Middleton went down and the Celtics got past them. So I have a lot of concerns. I want to buy in on them because I do think their process has been better. They've just been losing weird games, but man, the vibes make me too nervous. I still don't want to get by a position on the, on the Bucks right now. Jay, do you think the Bucks vibes can improve? Yeah, I do think so, uh, at least for the regular season. Like when I hear you say buy low, uh, I would say maybe not for the playoffs, but for the regular season, um, I do think that there is a possibility. Uh, you guys have to understand, especially in the NBA, things always get worse before they get better when making a big change. Uh, talking about bringing in new players, especially a new coach as well, even midseason. Now, I did think that uh, firing Griffin was going to backfire them on them, and they've started out 3-7 and seven with Doc Rivers. But um, looking at their next five games, they could literally go 5-0 and oh in their next five games and literally flip the whole script and it's kind of just kind of re reminds me of the Clippers when James Harden first got there they were losing games everybody was talking about oh, this is a horrible move and then they went on an insane run I can see the uh, Bucks doing that exact same thing they just need time to get used to the new system we heard Giannis talking about it uh, as soon as Rivers came over there they had a, a brutal four game West Coast road trip they didn't have a lot of time to practice as well so um, now having a time more rest and time to practice I think the Bucks will improve um, at least for the end of the regular season.
How NBA would it be if the Bucks just like ended up winning a title this year? By the way, they're at plus 650 right now, which are the uh, fourth best odds on the board. All right, finally, who goes further this postseason? Golden State or the Lakers? Matt? I'll take the Lakers. The Warriors are going to have an uphill time to get out of the nine. So historically, we have not seen nine and ten seeds. We've seen two play-in tournament teams make runs in the NBA playoffs last year, but not nine and ten seeds. Those teams usually don't make it out of the play-in. Um, the Warriors are going to have a hard time with that because the other teams do have a lead on them. A lot of them have tiebreaker advantage over Golden State, including the Lakers. So that's going to be, I think, a little bit tough for them to be able to dig out of this hole. The Warriors can play much better and still not catch. People really get confused about All-Star break. We have 27 games left on average. That's it. <laughs> that is not yeah. a lot of time to make up this kind of ground. Um, the Lakers also, they're 20 and 13. That's a 49-win pace when AD, LeBron, and Rui Hachimura play. They have talked a lot about how they've been so hurt, and that's what's missing. And while I do think a little bit of it is masking some of their big problems structurally, they're not wrong that they have missed guys, and that when healthy, when they have had the team they intend to put on the floor – They've been really good. I don't think Jared Vanderbilt matters as much as, as Hachimura does. And they're going to add Spencer Dinwiddie, who is a big advantage because he's got this ability, this really great basketball ability to not be D'Angelo Russell. And that's <laughs> what you need in a playoff series is to not be D'Angelo Russell. Oh so having another option, I think, is really good for them. Uh, the Warriors, I look, they've been awesome lately. They've played cupcakes. I need to see them play some of the, the bigger teams before I upgrade them any more in power rating. I still have the Lakers finishing above them. I think they'll be favored in, the, in a play-in tournament game. I'll take the Lakers to go further than the Warriors. Okay. Jay, what say you? Yeah, talk about two teams that just discussed uh, LeBron going to the Warriors. That was actually pretty crazy there. But um, you got to love the way the Warriors have been playing lately. They've really turned things around. They had This is the number six defensive rated team over the last 10 games. We know that offensively they can stay with anyone. But when they start to play defense and they're looking um, like a very well-balanced team, like they have been eight and two straight up last 10, this is the Warriors, uh, like the championship style type of Warriors that I've been seeing lately. I think they have a much higher ceiling than the Lakers right now, especially with their re recent play. Um, and like I said, they're back to playing defense. Steph is going crazy. I think there is a really high chance that the Warriors make the playoffs and the Lakers miss the playoffs. So um, as far as like for the rest of the regular season, I think the Warriors have a much higher ceiling. So I tend to lean with Jay on this Warriors having won six of their last seven. And I understand Matt, they haven't necessarily played a super tough schedule, but what sort of seals it for me is Steph Curry and the level that he's playing at. And he's playing better than LeBron right now. And he's playing better than Kevin Durant right now. So give me Steph all day. Uh, maybe biased, but that's just how I feel. Uh, before we let you guys go, let's just look ahead to tomorrow. Matt, you got a look ahead pick for us? Yeah, let's see Suns Mavericks under 243 and a half. We've already seen this tick down at 243. Uh, I, I'm going to like it at any number that you're going to find in the market because I projected it at 235. Uh, the Mavericks at home this season, the under is 53%. The Suns on the road, the under is 58%. So we've got two different spots where the market has kind of overestimated these two, two, two squads. Suns defense, a little bit better on the road than it is at home, quite honestly. And the Mavericks play a lot better at home, especially healthy Getting Derek Lively back, Daniel Gafford, having those guys healthy, that makes a big difference with the Mavericks' rim protection. P.J. Washington is not a great defender, but those trades are helping. They're just a more well-rounded team now, and they've got a little bit more versatility. They do not have enough slide guys into different positions. Plus, last two weeks, Dallas is actually second in defensive rating. Now, much like the Golden State Warriors that you two are foolishly buying into, they also have played no one. But <laughs> the Mavericks are playing a little bit better defensively. So that get, is enough to get me here at a very high number. I'll take Suns Mavericks under 243 and a half. I love how you get like a laugh out of me, whereas Jay is just so stoic yeah. in his uh, reaction well, well, to Matt, your ribbing. Matt did bet the Warriors to make the playoffs. So uh, he's kind of so with, with us in it. I actually uh, just, just um, for reference, I did bet the Warriors to make the playoffs like not that long ago. All right. I'm just really looking forward to having games back. Thank you guys, as always, for joining the show. Matt Moore, Jay Money, we'll be talking to you soon.